Now, another aspect is to describe uh, the idea that uh, somebody died for your sins. What time is it? The idea that somebody died for your sins. Is that a logical and reasonable idea? Now, you don't need any scripture reference for that. But if you need one, go to the book of Ezekiel in chapter 18, verse number 1. The soul that sins, that's the one that shall die. But even if you don't remember that, just go with the logic of it. Why would Allah crucify an innocent person in order that the guilty one should go free? Does that make any sense? Would any judge do that? Uh, no, obviously not. You cannot uh, penalize the innocent person in order for the guilty ones to go free. The only time when an innocent person might do something like that is when the innocent person pays a fine, for example. And that is because the judge does not have the authority to cancel the ticket. But if the judge had the authority to cancel, he can reduce the fine, he can dismiss the charge, he can do any of that. But if he wants to keep his job, he has to show that he is at least giving some penalties. And in that case, if he says you have to give a 50 pound fine, and if your brother pays it for you, that's okay. Because the judge does not have the authority to cancel it altogether. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has all the authority. He does not have to punish an individual if he doesn't want to. And if he decides to forgive somebody, nobody is going to question him. Oh, uh, God, but why did you forgive that person? The Quran says, لا يسأل عما يفعل وهم يسألون. Allah is not to be questioned about what he does, but they are to be questioned. So if Allah forgives a person that's within his prerogative, he can do that. On the other hand, according to what our Christian friends tell us, God still had to forgive people, even after taking the, the price from his beloved son. So that doesn't seem to make any sense. Because if the son paid the price, that means they all go free. If all of you go to the local store and you buy up a lot of things on credit, and uh, if Brother Imtiaz comes and pays, because uh, he's a rich brother, if he comes and pays all your bills, then that means you all go free. The shopkeeper can no longer come back to you and say, but wait a minute, Ahmed, you didn't pay your bill. Because if he's an honest shopkeeper, he couldn't come back to you with that. Now that doesn't make any difference whether you know Imtiaz, whether you even like the guy. Your bills are settled whether you know him or like him or not. So if Isa a.s. really paid the sins for all of the people, he paid the penalty for everyone, then everyone should automatically go free, and obviously nobody would claim that, therefore they should not claim that he died for the sins of everyone. Now a complicated problem I have found uh, for our Christian friends to deal with is to ask them who exactly died on the cross then. You see they say that uh, Jesus died on the cross, and we ask why Jesus? Why not somebody else? Can I die for the sins of the world? They say, no, because you're a sinner yourself. Only Jesus can die for the sins of the world. So we say, okay, so all right, so he's sinless, so he dies for the sins of the world. But he's still one man. How could one man pay for everybody? It said that his blood, because he's God, his sacrifice is infinite. And so that is good for all of the people. We say, okay, so the infinite sacrifice, God himself died on the cross. So God died. They say, no. So then you should stop saying that God died for your sins. Because when it comes to the cross, they say, no, only the man part of him died. But God didn't die. So if God didn't die, why did you say in the first place that God will die for your sins? A second complicated problem for them is sometimes you have to make things dramatic so that they understand very easily. You imagine that God, uh, if, if, or, or to take the situation of a judge. You know what happened with, uh, according to the Gospels. According to the Gospels, Isa a.s. was in the garden and he was praying uh, to God uh, to save him from the cross. And he says, not my will but yours be done. So finally, of course, obviously it was the will of God according to the Christian scriptures for him finally to be crucified. So now, okay, so he's crucified. But look at the logic of this. Suppose a judge, he has a bunch of criminals before him. Right? And he says to them, criminals, I want you to go free because I love you. And then, but he says, but somebody's got to pay the price here. Guards, bring my son. And then the guards come in with the son, and the son is pleading and bending down and begging and saying, Father, please, you know, let this, uh, let there be some other way. Dad, you're the greatest guy in the world. Can't you think of some other way? Couldn't it be somewhere else? Let me go. And the father says, no, son, you've got to die. Criminals, I love you. <laughs> Now, 
Now, you can see that obviously, obviously this makes no sense. And I mention it to you not to entertain you brothers, but to show you the, the gravity of responsibility that you have. There are people who would like to be freed from this uh, sort of understanding, but they do not have something better that they, they have been exposed to. And you average Muslim, Muhammad, Fatima, all of you, can go out there and just explain these simple logical points to people and they will understand it. Just show them that Islam is the completion and the fruition of all of the expectations and hopes. Uh, that teaching which they've been trying to follow has now been shown more clearly in, in Islam, in the revelation from Allah Azza wa Jal, and that they need to follow that.